charge of running a Michael Jackson charity to run a scam. An India woman says she wants to set the record straight on her fight to protect the King of Pop brand. That's new at 6 tonight. More than a year after his death, controversy continues to surround Michael Jackson. Last September, Jackson's estate filed a lawsuit against a local woman claiming that she used the late singer's name and likeness without authorization. Now the estate called her a scammer and a fraud. Well, now she's fighting back and speaking out in an exclusive interview with News Channel 3's Jason Sloss. It is a story you'll only see here on News Channel 3. <laughs> Since Michael Jackson's death, Melissa Johnson says she has fought to keep one of his beloved charities alive. She says she's also trying to protect the pop star's legacy for his family. But for the last year, she's been locked in a legal battle with Michael Jackson's estate. And they've been hostile, just vicious, and um, it seems like no restraint with what they're willing to do to um, uh, bring us down. The story begins back in 2003 when Johnson first got involved with Jackson's Heal the World Foundation, which aimed to help the poor and abused. I just want to be in the background and help him accomplish his worthy goals, because I really thought he could pull it off. Off. Miracles pull off real change in, in society with his fame and his influence. Johnson says after Jackson's legal trouble sidelined the charity, she took over. He wasn't going to be involved in the day-to-day -day operations. That's what his management told me. So they were okay with us um, running the charity. Uh, this was a year before he died. And this was his management. Everything we've done, Mr. Jackson knew about it. Um, his management, we worked with his management. We reported to his management. But shortly after the singer died, Johnson was hit with a lawsuit from his estate, claiming she had no direct ties with Jackson. We just swooped in after Michael died, um, and we're just one of the many that are trying to exploit his death for financial and personal gain, which it's, um, it's devastating. Brian Oxman has been a Jackson family attorney for more than 20 years. He says Johnson is telling the truth. She provided me with a whole description of what it was that she wanted to do with Heal the World Foundation. It was a great, big, huge book. It probably was this thick. Had all the description in it of all the things. Presented that to Michael. Michael went over it and said, this is fine with him. He had no objection to anything Melissa Johnson did. The lawsuit claimed Johnson unlawfully obtained names and phrases such as King of Pop, Neverland, and Thriller in order to deceive people and rake in donations. She says it was all done to protect Jackson's legacy. We bought the Heal the World trademarks only before he died. And it wasn't until after a week after he died and a year of begging the new Jackson management to preserve his trademarks that we finally said said, enough is enough. After a week after he died and they still weren't doing anything and people are out bootlegging Michael Jackson merchandise all over the world, we went in and we uh, acquired as many of the uh, Jackson-related trademarks as we could. Johnson says the state executors didn't have an interest in the charity until a $30 million offer came in for one of the trademarks. The estate has been hijacked by strangers. Oxman says even today the Jackson family is kept out of the loop by executors, people he says Michael Jackson did not like and even tried to fire. As we have those people who Michael Jackson said, you are no longer part of my life, you are not to have anything to do with me ever again, they are the administrators of his estate. How does that happen? I think in the life of Michael Jackson, the rules of logic, the rules of law just don't seem to prevail. Michael Jackson's estate has reportedly earned nearly a billion dollars since his death. Meanwhile, Johnson says she doesn't have the money for the attorney she needs to fight the injunction. But she's not giving up. I just want to make sure that we're not going to hand over the farm to bad guys who are going to exploit Mr. Jackson in death the same way he was exploited in, in life. Jason Sloss, New Channel 3 HD. Tall. They're taller than I would have thought, more mature. But these are three of the most famous children in the world. Prince, Paris, and Blanket Jackson. So different now than when they broke our hearts almost two years ago at their famous father's funeral. Daddy has been the best father you could ever imagine. 
Today, they are still very much connected to their father, continuing his legacy of giving. And on this day, they are inside L.A. Family Housing, an organization that provides services to help families and individuals transition from being homeless. Mrs. Jackson, I just I look at your grandchildren and to see how they're just so well adjusted, so with their kids, caring children. They're good kids. And here, there are just three children playing among the other kids, having ice cream, making waffles, B5, playing games. The late King of Pop's children are here on behalf of the Heal the World Foundation. On behalf of Vintage Pop and Heal the World Foundation, we present you with a check for $10,000. As the kids mingled, I had a chance to chat with their grandmother, Catherine Jackson, their legal guardian since her son passed away. This is the first time they ever had regular schooling. They have, have always had homeschooling. They seem to be really adjusting to it well. They love it. You don't even have to have, make them get up. They just get up. They're ready for school. It's one thing to hear that the children are doing well, but to see it with the veils gone with my own eyes was pretty remarkable. These are really normal kids, complete with iPods and yellow nail polish and beloved action figures. And grandma is, well, just a regular grandma, too. Sit up straight. I need to sit up. <laughs> How are you doing? We're doing just fine. So they're almost two years, and um, the children are coming along just fine. Is there a time of the day that becomes more difficult? There's not an hour of day that doesn't go by that I don't think about my son. It's just, that's hard. Do you think of him especially in occasions like this with, with children and how much he, he wanted to help them? He's always wanted to help them since he was a little child. He just loved children and Michael had a very good heart. People misunderstood him. All the lies that were told him, the way he suffered from what these people had done to him, these wicked people, I get upset when I think about it. Through all of that, he still kept his composure and he still he didn't, he wasn't angry inside, but he still tried to help children. As for Michael's own children, one can only imagine how happy he would be to see them coming into their own. Now that they're in school, I know it must do your heart good to see how well they're doing and in, in being in school. They're doing very well. Do you all concur? Everything's going well in school? What's your favorite subject? Jim. <laughs> Jim? Jim and lunch, those are two subjects. Amen. <laughs> Oh, I know they are. I know they are. But I understand that the, the parents you want to be, you want to be an actress? Yeah. I'm thinking about auditioning for a play next week. For me to sign for her to be able to audition for this play at school. Oh. She's excited about it. Oh, yeah. Prince won the game today. <laughs> Where'd you win? Oh, basketball. The season ended. You're a hoopster? He's yeah. a beast. <laughs> Blanca, what do you have there? What's that little thing? Mm -hmm. <laughs> They're ready for showbiz. Uh -huh. <laughs> what are you going to do, Prince? I know that Paris is going to be the actress. I'm looking at a couple of opportunities in show business, mostly producing. Producing, such yeah. as? Oh, uh, movies. Really? Yeah. It's an interest Michael fostered in his young son. That's what his father wanted to do, and uh, he was doing it right along with them. They had some classes in it. Um, well, Seth, what were you doing? Talk a little bit about what UCLA, you all were doing with Michael. Yeah. We had a, a teacher from UCLA come to our house, and we would do film classes there. And when we were in Ireland, we would film a couple movies with him, too. Oh, you were doing this before? Yes. You're saying? So it's, it's, a, it's a natural that you want to continue doing that. Say, so even now, blanket. He gets his, and then Paris dresses up like a little waitress or something, and they shoot their little movies. They're kids with big dreams and big plans to give back. It makes me feel very good, because one reason why is because it's following what Michael wanted. But so much of Michael's life was filled with controversy, and sadly in death, controversy remains. Howard Mann, one of Mrs. Jackson's business partners, and the charity Heal the World are both in litigation with the estate. I believe it's greed, fundamentally. I think that uh, the notion to me that Mrs. Jackson is not able to use her son's name or the Heal the World Foundation is, is stopped by the courts from using Michael's name is utterly ridiculous to me. I don't understand whose agenda this service is um, outside of maybe a group of lawyers. In a statement to Good Morning America, 
Jackson's estate told us they believe Howard Mann is making these allegations for his own financial gain. The current Heal the World Foundation has no relation to Michael Jackson's charity that touched so many lives before becoming inactive several years before Michael's death. The estate does not believe Michael's children should be used to exploit a foundation that a federal judge found was not associated with Michael Jackson. But regardless of the legal battles, Michael's children are committed to carrying on his legacy of helping others. Prince is on the board of Heal the World. So what, do you, what would you like to do, uh, your work with the board? What would you like to see? I guess continue what our dad was doing, like helping uh, children from across the world and animals who couldn't speak up for themselves. Mm-hmm. And you, Paris? Ditto. <laughs> Just like a kid, ditto. And I have to tell you, George, um, that was not the first time they have spent time at the L.A. Family Transitional Center in North Hollywood. In fact, uh, when I was there with them, I was looking through this book that um, Katherine Jackson has put together, Goodbye, Never Say Goodbye. And so we're looking at the book, and it's great pictures of Michael and these stories. And Paris has the book, too. And a young resident there is looking at it and is like, Wow, Michael Jackson, did you know Michael Jackson? <laughs> well, didn't even realize that it was his daughter. And that's the way they like it. They just blend in there and they just want to give a, as much as they can to that center and to other charities as well. Well, you can tell, at least from the appearances, Robin, they are amazingly unaffected by all this. I gotta tell you, George, I mean, that's the first time I've been um, in, in their uh, presence and I, I was just taken aback. Um, just very comfortable, of, um, just normal kids and that's how Captain Jackson, and, and they lead by example. Mrs. Jackson is just so elegant, so composed, and, uh, but still, uh, still grieving very much for, for her son. But I appreciated the opportunity to spend time with them here in Los Angeles. And I've got to give you and Sam a little bit here, uh, George. I notice how both of you have mentioned that there could be s <laughs> snow on the Hollywood sign what? Uh, come Sunday in Oscars. I just, I just want to know that I did notice that you both have said you, that you already. Know, you knew it was coming, Rob. <laughs>